Night of Treehouse, book number three, Summer of the Sea Serpent, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter 11, Sword and Rhyme. The sea serpent moved its head very close to Jack and Nanny and hissed a long, whispery The serpent's flickering tongue touched the sword for a moment. Jack saw nearly stopped. But then the serpent slowly pulled back his head and began to uncoil itself from around the rocky island. The monster kept uncoiling its great body until once again one wide ring surrounded the cove like a circle of green hills. Then the serpent's head sank beneath the water with a barely abrupt pull. It was impossible to tell where its body started and where it ended. Jack and Annie lowered the sword of light and laid it back on the rock. And they let out a huge symphony and sat down next to each other. Cassidy and Teddy poked their sealed heads up from the calm waters. Burr, burr, they barked. Jack and Annie laughed. It's safe to come up now, Annie called. The seals held themselves onto the rocky island. Then they plopped on their sides. The sword help us answer the ancient question, said Jack. They all looked at the sword of light. It glowed brightly, even through the sun. I slipped below the horizon and the purple sand was fading into twilight. We still have to get out of here before it's completely dark, said Annie. I know, said Jack, but how? Look at Bernie's ring, said Annie. Jack took the shell from his pocket. He read the last line of Bernie's rhyme. Was run and swore the home was near. Jack looked up. That doesn't make sense. He said, perhaps it does, said Teddy. Jack and Annie turned around. Teddy and Captain were standing behind them. Their skill spins suddenly slipped off. They were human again. Perhaps it calls for a magical run, said Teddy. And I am a magician, remember? And laughed. How could we forget? She said, Teddy Green, I have got a much better at my rhymes, he said. Just watch. He rubbed his son together. Then he carefully picked up the sword of light. He gripped his hand with both hands. He pointed at the silver blade towards the treehouse on a distant sea cliff. Teddy took a deep breath. Then he shouted, Oh, sword of light, now light the night. Teddy paused. Jack and Wally. Teddy always had trouble finishing his rhymes, and even the ones he did finish never worked the way they were supposed to. Castle stepped close to the young sorcerer. Say it again, she said softly. Teddy clouded again. Oh, sword of light, now night the night. Castle finished the rhyme in silky language. My ebri stroll a bleak. The sword began to vibrate in Teddy's hands. There was a roar and a blast of white light. Then shimmery beams shot through the dark. The beams were and waved and streamed together to make a glittering bridge. The bridge spanned purple darkness of dust. The stretch of a rocky island in the middle of the cove to the sea cliff above the coast. When Teddy lowered the sword, the bridge remained in the sky. Wow, whispered Annie. She turned to Cassie. What did you say to finish the rhyme? My if we strong and bleak, Cassie told her, make a bridge strong and bright. Yes, that is exactly what I was going to say, said Teddy. Indeed, said Catherine, smiling. She took Teddy's hand, then turned to Jack and Annie. Tis a bright wish to take you from my world. Back to yours. You mean we could walk on it? Said Annie. Try it, said Teddy. Oh, man, said Jack. He laughed nervously. Then raised his foot and put it down on the light. I felt solid. 
He put his other foot on the leg and took a step forward. The leg fell as firm as a brick pathway. Annie stepped out to the night bridge beside Jack. It was wide enough for them to stand side by side. This is so cool, she whispered. Wait, do not forget this, said Teddy. He carefully handed Annie, Jack, and Annie the sword of light. I must return to my cave now," said Kathy, "or my sister will begin to worry." And I will see Kathy back home," said Teddy, and return to the future in Camelot. "Oh," said Jack. He wanted to have supper with the Silkies too. He wanted to spend more time with Kathy and Teddy, whatever they were doing. "We better get going, Jack," said Anne. "It's almost dark." Okay," said Jack. "Goodbye for now," Captain said to them. "And thank you. It's amazing how you defeated the enemy." The sea serpent wasn't really our enemy," said Jack. "He was like the Spider Queen," said Annie. "They both seemed really scary until we got to know them." "Yeah," said Jack. "Will we see you again?" Annie asked Teddy and Kathleen. Yes, I have a feeling we'll see both of us again soon," said the silky. "We will find you where you least expect it," said Teddy with a grin. "Now, my friends, you must go now. Night comes quickly upon you. Farewell, my friends." "Farewell," said Jack and Annie. They turned and started walking up the bright bridge. High above the water, the swords slid, swung over the cove like a swinging lantern. The water below shimmered with sparkling ripples. Jack heard two splashes behind them. He stopped and listened. Go, go, go! Whispered Annie. Jack started walking again. He and Annie climbed higher and higher until they came to the end of the bright pathway. They stepped off the bridge onto the rocky sea cliff above the coves. Clutching the hand of the sword, they looked back. The shining bridge stretched into a million pieces of golden light, like the sparks of the silver sky. The glittering pieces rained down through the sky, then they quickly burned out. The cove below was dark and sunny, except for the distant barking of the seals.